Hi, I'm James from Paradise Palapa. Today we're going to show you how to assemble your 10x10 Palapa kit. So, let's get started. The first step is to assemble the rig. All the pieces come pre-cut, pre-drilled, and labeled. All you have to do is align the numbers and bolt them together. When assembling your ring, you want to make sure the bottom side is flush and your inside edge is lined up. That way it sits on your pull flush. And then just bolt it together. It's as easy as that. Now that your ring is assembled, you want to place it in the exact position where you're going to be building your wall. Once you get it in position, you want to come to each corner and make a small mark on the inside and the outside edge. The reason we do this is because with rough cut timber, it's not always going to be exactly square, and this will ensure you have proper bracket placement. Now that you got them all in place, it's time to bolt them down. So let's get started on drilling it, and we'll come back for the next step. Now it's time to install the ring on top of the poles. You'll need a friend for this step. Now it's time to secure the ring to the post. Go on one corner at a time, make sure the post is plumb and that the ring sits properly on the corner. We'll post pictures of the proper placement for the rings. Okay, now that you got your ring secured to the post and your posts are plumb, it's time to install your braces provided in the kit. The way you want to do this is hold it up to the pole and up to the ring until it sits flush both on the ring and on the post and secure the bottom one. Make sure when, after you secure the bottom one or the top one, it lines up in the center of the ring before you secure it. As you're working your way around installing these braces, you want to check, stand back and check to make sure everything is plumb as you keep going. Sometimes when you're installing the braces, you'll come across a corner where it just doesn't sit completely flush. So what I like to do is I'll mark out where it needs to be, and then I'll just sand it down a little bit to make it flush. And then you can test fit it. Make sure it's sitting flush. Go ahead and secure it. There you go. Alright guys, now that you got the braces installed, just do a final walk around, make sure everything's still straight and plumb before we get to the next step, which is to start the framing on the roof. So we'll get to that. Alright, now you got these attached directly opposite of each other. It's time to set this up there and get it screwed in. The way we like to do it is we'll set one side up on the ring. And I'll hold it there until he gets up there. set it up there like that. You want to make sure that you got about the same amount of overhang on this side and on the other side. And you want to also make sure that it's sitting directly on the center of the ring. Okay, we got those first two sides in. And we got them secured just with the six inches on the bottom to hold it in place. Now we'll do the other two sides. So I'll get up there. I usually will just put this 
screw through the top side on both sides first before we secure the bottom. And then we can position the ridge until we like it and it's straight. Then we'll screw through the bottom as well. So we'll get this going and I'll explain everything on the way. Top one secured. You want to step back and look at it, make sure everything's even and that it's dead center. If everything looks good, you go around. You want to check your overhang on each corner. Make sure it's the same on each side before you secure the bottom. That's looking good. We can go ahead and secure the bottom. Okay, we got the 10 inch lags into the hips. Now we're ready to do the next step, which is put the 1 by 3s The 1 by 3s are going to go on the bottom row all the way around. So we'll get set up for that and then we'll come back. Alright, now we're up here. The thing I like to do to start off to put the 1 by 3s is to get a rough line of center here and just make a little mark up top. Up top here. That'll help you when you get your angle cut and you'll know that you're in the center. So when you're putting the one by threes on here, you want this bottom edge to be matching up with the top of this edge here so that it'll sit flush. So just get a rough estimate. <clears throat> you also want to have a little bit of overhang on each side. Match that bottom to this edge and we'll go ahead and secure this one. We'll get it secured on both sides and then we'll cut it. Okay, so after you do your first one, you always want to do the exact opposite side after the first one. And then we'll do the fill-ins. So, whenever we do this, same thing here, we want to overhang it. Roughly mark your angle there. And this is the reason that I use a sawzall or a chainsaw is because in order for this to mount up flush to this, it's got a slight miter to it, which is just way easier to get it with a, with a sawzall or a chainsaw. So I'll do that. I'll flush this bottom up with the bottom of the other one by three. And then I'll draw my line and then I'll cut it. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this and then we'll secure it.
flush the, the other side. So you can go ahead and secure that one now. And we'll post pictures of close up so you can see exactly what it's supposed to look like when it's done. Alright, now we're going to get the raptors going. So, the side that has a pre drilled hole is the side that's going to go up into the hip. So, we'll get this lit up there and I'll describe how we're, how we're doing it. So, when you put these up there, you want to start maybe, and you want to slide until your angle here is flush with the, with the hip here. And also, get your helper down here to pull it up until that is flush with the one by same as we did on the corner hips. You want that one by three to be flush outside of the wrapper. So you want to check here, make sure you flush here as well. Also you want it to be flush across the top so when you put your thatch on there later it'll sit evenly. And if everything's looking good you just go ahead and you secure just the top. We'll do the bottom later. Okay, now you got these in and they're flush with the top of the hips on both sides. And again, you want the bottom of this 1x3 to be flush with this rafter, as close as possible at least. And we'll do the same thing all the way around. And also, we only secure the top, not the bottom. We'll do that last. When we, and when we get to that, I'll explain why. All right, now we got the first set of wrappers in, secured only at the top. We'll just go around and eyeball that each of them straight and screw the bottom in. Do one at a time, all the way around, and then we'll get to the next set of wrappers. Separate video explaining how to do the thatch and we'll walk you through that process. 